In today's video, I'll be talking about the seven major mistakes that I see beginner publishers doing time and time again. They wonder why their books aren't selling and it's always at least one or two of these major mistakes. Rather than you going through the trial and error and the struggle of figuring all these out on your own, I'm gonna list them all out today and go through them one by one so you can make sure that you're not making any of these mistakes that will drastically impact your royalties. Number one on the list is shiny object syndrome. If you know anything about my story and how I got started in, with Amazon KDP, I'd actually struggled for more than a decade starting one business and then something else would pop up. It'd be like eBay or drop shipping. And then I would start that, feel a bit of resistance. And then I would see something else and I jumped that business. It wasn't until I fully committed to Amazon KDP and I said, all right, it doesn't matter how long this takes, I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna keep doing this until it starts paying me. And little did I know at the time, this would be such a, a life-changing realization for me. And then fast forward three or four years, I had a month where I made over $58,000. None of this would have been possible if I kept jumping to different business models and dealing with shiny object syndrome. And I, I know a lot of you watching this struggle with that. So I'm here to tell you, if you're interested in Amazon KDP and you're interested in publishing, just commit to that one business model. So if you try and do everything, you'll just dilute your efforts and you won't get anywhere with any of them. So stick to one thing. The second one is not doing proper topic research. I see this time and time again. There's people that put out a book, they haven't even found out if there's any market for it. And I'm guilty of this too. One of my first books was basically like something around how to pack for a trip. It's like the same as, you know, how to paint a fence. There is either no market for this or the market is like microscopic. No matter how good the book is, it's already gonna be a failure. I just did a quick 30 second search to find a book that has done a, a poor job doing research and you know crafting the title. The title is Now is the Best Time Ever to Owe the IRS. I've seen way, way worse than this. There's been people that have zero keywords in the title and basically nobody is searching for their book. They've just made it some name that doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna give this like a two out of 10, whereas there's lots of books that it would be a zero. So if we go into the search box here and I put in um, IRS. So the first thing that comes up is Irish Spring Soap t-shirt IRS so tax code book 2024 that's really about it and I mean I believe this book is kind of on the same topic as that but there really just isn't anyone searching for anything directly about the IRS you know you can see there's books here on income tax small business taxes and stuff like that but essentially this book has been made around keywords people aren't looking for and they've done a really bad job putting them in the title. If we go down here, I have the book beam plugin and it shows me the bestseller rank, 1,335,000. My guess is, first of all, this book is not selling and I would be surprised if it even sold one copy a month based off of that. So with this book, they obviously should have made the book more towards tax planning, taxes for small business. And the IRS could have been just a tiny part of it, but they made the whole book around that and they executed poorly on the title. You're way better off to be in a crowded space where there is demand and you're competing for it versus being in a space where nobody is looking for your product. The third thing on the list that I see all the time is someone will show me their book and they'll wonder why it's not selling and they won't have any reviews. They won't even have one. Even if you do have two or three reviews, if the other books in your category have 50 or 100 or 150, not only are they going to rank better in Amazon, but also people are going to trust them a lot more. So I've just put in crypto and then I scroll down a bit just to see some of the different options for books. And right away, I see Pamela here, two stars and uh, not UR keys. Interesting pen name, zero reviews. I'm not gonna trust either of these books. If I'm trying to learn about crypto, why would I buy these books? I'm probably not going to. I, there's no social proof. There's nothing here that tells me that this is the authority or the book I wanna be reading. Even at $10, the price is gonna be within the same range as all the other book. So I'm going to get the book that has a ton of social proof. So I'm going to scroll down a bit further and here we go. This one right here, Bitcoin book, 1,073 reviews. I'm going to pay four more dollars to get a book that not only looks much nicer, but clearly it has the reviews and the feedback to back it up that it uh, it's going to do what it says it does. 
So when it comes to reviews, you don't need to have thousands of them, but you need to have enough that is giving you some proof that this book is going to do what it says it's going to do. Obviously, people are spending their hard earned money and they want to learn whatever the book is promising and they need some proof that it's going to do that. And this leads us into the fourth major mistake that I see, and that is the quality of the book. So many people are getting a book written, like through a ghostwriter, and they're not an active participant in the book being created. They either give them an outline or they don't, and they just basically wait for them to finish the book. They don't read it themselves. They're in such a rush to get it to the marketplace that they don't even consider if the book does what it says it does or if it's truly helpful. And what ends up happening is, instead of getting a positive feedback loop of people reading the book, writing reviews saying how helpful it was for them, they get a negative feedback loop. And every time someone buys the book, you're gonna be more and more likely to get a negative review. And this is basically, instead of your book gaining positive reviews and going up in the rankings on Amazon, it's just gonna go down. And then eventually when the reviews are really bad, there's gonna be nothing you can do to revive it and you will wasted money creating that book. So when you have your book created and you need to be able to take that book and show it to a family member, I've used the example of grandma book, which is, would you take your book and give it to your grandma or you know some family member and have them read it and actually be proud of the book or would you be embarrassed for them to take that book and be like wow you're selling this so at the end of the day the book has to be good or it's not going to sell very long and it's not going to make you money so the fifth mistake that i see a lot is Someone will go through all the steps, putting their book together, getting a nice cover, doing the research, doing things properly, but then they won't spend any money on marketing. And really for the most part, for most people who are beginners, marketing is just gonna consist of running Amazon ads. So basically all you're doing is you're going to the marketing section in your dashboard and you're running some sort of ads, even something just basic as an automatic ad where you let Amazon do its thing. And you can set it for four or $5 a day. Doesn't mean it's even gonna spend all that but what this is going to do is going to help your book rank better organically and if you've done everything correct it should make sales at the end of the day if you can put in five dollars and get ten dollars back how much would you spend probably as much as you could afford and we'll talk about amazon advertising in another video and give you a bit of a walkthrough but if you do things correctly with your book you're not likely to ever lose any money on ads one major thing that Amazon KDP attracts is a lot of people that are trying to do low content books and create things where they don't have to spend any money on ads and you know they don't want to put any money into their business. There is ways to do this without running any ads, which I've explained in other videos, so it's not 100% necessary. But these days, I think you'd be crazy not to spend at least a couple dollars a day when you launch your book to allow it to get a better organic placement. And at the end of the day, if you're making money on it, then why wouldn't you spend money? Don't see it as a huge risk or that you're going to lose a bunch of money. We're talking about like a couple dollars a day just to get you started. The sixth mistake is around cover design. Since people always want to do things on the cheap end, they want to make their own covers in Canva. And you can totally do this and you have zero budget, then I do recommend starting this way. But at the end of the day, most of us are not that creative and we're not really designers. The difference between me creating something in Canva without much experience and spending five, 10, $15 on something like Fiverr to get the cover done by a professional, it can be a night and day difference for your book sales just by spending that extra few bucks and have a professional do it. So there's a lot of great designers for very small amounts of money. And if you put a lot of work into your book and then you won't spend the extra $10 on the cover, you're gonna find you're gonna lose a lot of money that you could have potentially been making. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what people say, everyone judges a book by its cover and the cover is actually like 80 or 90% of your success, provided you're in a market that people are actually buying books in, unlike uh, our friend in the IRS. This is a uh, horrendous book cover. Cover. So you don't want to be this guy. I always recommend German Creative. Obviously, you can see by the reviews, they're very popular and a lot of other people recommend them. But I just like to point out people that I personally have used and I know that they're reliable. You can get a basic ebook cover for $10, $20. You can get one for KDP and Ingram Spark. Create Space does not exist anymore. It's very reasonable. If there's going to be anywhere where you spend your money, this is one of the places you want to do it. 
So last but not least, this is arguably one of the most important things on the list. The seventh mistake I see is that someone will publish their book and they'll put it on Amazon KDP and they'll just say, put up a Kindle version of it. You know, maybe it won't sell very much. Or maybe they get a couple sales and they're kind of deterred. And they'll be like, ah, oh, this publishing stuff doesn't work. You want to put your book on as many platforms in as many formats as possible. So this means that you put your book on Amazon KDP, you enroll that in KDP Select, so you get paid for page reads. You do the paperback version, the hardcover version, you do the audiobook version. I've never done this, but like if you can do a spiral band, you should do a spiral band. You want all the different buying options. When I first got started in publishing, I was not putting my books on all different platforms because I wasn't aware of it and I was missing out on so much money. And one of the big breakthroughs actually happened when and I was making like $1,000 a month and I took some of my books and I turned them into audiobooks. I got some reviews and then I put them onto Ingram Spark. And then Christmas came along and I basically went from making $1,000 a month to $5,000 a month within just a couple months just because I put these products on different platforms. If you don't have your books hosted everywhere, you're missing out. Make sure that your books are distributed everywhere. I hope this video was helpful and I hope if you are making some of these mistakes you go and correct them right now and uh, get back to me let me know what your results are I want to hear if someone has only been publishing on KDP and they go put them on Ingram Spark how much money did you make if your book had zero reviews and you went out and got 15 reviews on it and started to run a little bit of ads what happened and as always if you have any questions about the video just drop me a comment down below I'm very responsive and I'll always try and get back to you and if you did enjoy this video you should consider liking or subscribing subscribe in the video because it helps me out tremendously. Thanks and I'll see you guys in the next one.